as the Rebels host El Paso, El Dorado. Matthew Villanueva live at Grande Stadium now with more on tonight's game. Matthew, I can't help but notice you don't have a date. Marshall, you know the CBS Sports Department rule. You made it up yourself. No girlfriends during the football season, although the atmosphere kind of takes me back to my glory days. Uh, let's talk Midland Lee, though. On July 1st at the PGA Professional National Championship, in a pool of over 300 golfers, Midlander Stephen Young nabbed one of 20 spots to qualify for the PGA Championship. And although Young practically lives out here at Midland Country Club, he barely has time to practice. I'm a golf pro, but I work, and uh, it's a misconception that the weather may be cool in Oxnard, California compared to here in West Texas, but things got pretty heated in practice and for the Cowboys to make the playoffs for the first time since 2009, this may be just what they needed. It's all weather up to whether or not they can stop the TCU commit quarterback Brandon Wooten. Mojo leads the series all time 32-13-1 over the angry orange. Now I've had countless amount of time to think about this and without a doubt my choice of walk-up song will be Nas's made you look. But you gotta keep the fans in it, right? Which is why my alternate song would be The Stones, Brown Sugar. Yet neither of those songs could compare it to an instrument that took over the A's organization last year. This feels like deja vu right now. I don't know if it was in our past life or this life. We were once on the same desk. Shelby Landgraf. I think in so. The mix. So yeah, I'm here at Security Bank Ballpark. It looks like we needed all the superheroes we can get, but it looks like the rain's gonna pass with me right now. I've got Cortland and Micah. Cortland, who are you? I am Spider-Man. Yeah, can you show me your web? He told us five years ago that one night at the track we got rained out. There was uh, you couldn't ride a complete lap, and uh, they were practicing jumps. And he said, "You know, I'm going to be in X Games. That's what I'm going to do." And here he is. Davy Johnson lives for the moment. It's just that adrenaline rush. Once you get a little taste, you want more and more and more. It's just more of a, a drug. You, I gotta have it to keep me sane. Living on the edge has given him a longer medical record than most people will have in their lifetime. I've actually shattered my kneecap in the six pieces, my right, left and right collarbone, wrist four times. It's probably broken over. Maybe 30 broken bones. I mean, just the list just keeps going on and on and on. Yet Johnson keeps competing and winning, setting himself up for the biggest stage in all of extreme sports events. Right here is his custom-made Texas bike he'll be riding for the motocross quarter pipe event. And in his backyard, he's been working on a top-secret trick for six months that he's ready to show to the world. I will say I'll be doing a body varial. I'll be letting go of the bike, I'll tell you that, but... It's a top secret trick. Uh, it's probably the first body burial ever done on a quarter pipe. You just kind of have to see it. To, uh, it'll make you go, wow, that's for sure. It's one thing for Johnson to represent West Texas. It's another for him to be the only Texan. And it's truly a feat for the 20-year-old to be the only American in the event competition. And he takes it all in stride. He's kind of the oddity in this sport. Uh, um, he, it's a very loud sport. He's kind of a quiet guy, um, but uh, he's also the guy they can't ignore either because he does come up with these fantastic tricks. It's pretty cool. Although I don't do football or anything like that, it, I still stand out. You don't need to play pigskin to make the Permian Basin proud. Johnson will be squaring off against seven of the world's best the event has to offer. Those are the people I kind of look up to. Like, they're my heroes and all that. It's just kind of weird to go up against them. So there's a little rivalry, I guess, now. And in a sport where sponsorship dollars can be scarce, it won't matter whether he wins or loses. It can only get better from here. Come check on Davey by June 15th and <laughs> see how things change for him. I think it's going to be... I don't think there's going to be a ceiling. Reporting from Gardendale, Matthew Villanueva, CBS 7 Sports. There's something to be said about West Texas football. And in the small, secluded town of Iran, there's no season quite like football season. It's by far the, the biggest sports that our kids do, and uh, it ger generates the uh, biggest buzz here in town. We're a little bit isolated out here, and you know we rely on each other a lot, and you know, you've, you've got kids that are blue collar kids, you know, that, that know how to work, and they come in, and you know, uh, it, it's a, there's not a lot that goes on in Iran, so you know, Friday night football game, that's an event. Residents such as Johnny Rosales can recall the brightest of Braves days. 
He can pretty much tell you anything you need to know about the program's past. Mr. Charles Ivey scored Arians' first touchdown with fumble recovery in, in the end zone versus Rankin. Dedicating years to comprise an official Ira Ann football history book. And he remembers the state team of 1996 like it was yesterday. There wasn't a superstar there. There's just a collective team, you know. This basically the same what we got right now. There's not a superstar. It's just a team. We're all just like a brotherhood. That's all it was. Uh, we all play for each other. We helped each other in the team off and on the field. And then uh, we just took it one game at a time. So we did. This will be the first year the Braves are back in the quarterfinal since 2008. And besides the talent and desire of the players they get year in and year out, it's hard to deny what head coach Mark Kirhoff and his staff have accomplished since being hired back in 2012. And the players seem to agree. Well, he's a good coach. I love it. I love his dolphins he runs. You know, we get after it. Ever since he's came, you know, we've gone undefeated every season besides our playoff runs. At the end of the year last year, he called me in the office. Quarterback Jared Day, he was leaving. He called me in the office and asked me what I thought about who, if I had to start this team over, who would I pick to be quarterback? And I told him Clayton, and he's like, that's exactly what I was thinking. He started all the way over with Clayton, got the whole team to buy in on it. He just, he has a different way of coaching. He can coach any team he wants, I think, to be a winning team. The five seniors of this team were freshmen in Coach Kierhoff's first year. And from here out, they, along with the entire team, will play for a moment they've waited for most of their lives. We spent countless hours playing street football when we were pre-K all the way till we started junior high football, and then we played junior high football, and it means everything to us. Baseball, are you ready? Look in. You, you, we want to win state. You know, that's what you dream about. I was throwing passes to myself in my front yard and catching them, playing, pretending like I catch, caught the state championship touchdown pass. And it's my dream, you know? It's all of our dreams. That's what we want to do. In Iran, Matthew Villanueva, CBS 7 Sports. Welcome back. Just two out of nearly 40 of our coverage area football teams remained in the hunt for a state title. Both were six-man teams, both in the state semifinals, and both played tonight. First up was Buena Vista, who was in Wolforth against Follette, the 13-0 Longhorns facing the 12-1 Panthers. The winner is going to be punching a ticket to Abilene in state. Buena Vista brought its biggest crowd of the season, the 12th man cheering Ethan Evans, hitting Miguel Padilla on the first play from scrimmage for the first score of the game. Follett, though, will respond to nodded at 8. BV rolling on all cylinders early. Evans will be avoiding the pressure and hits Dakota Bustamantes in stride for another trip for six. Injuries, though, they will play a major factor for the Longhorns tonight. Jose Castro and Miguel Padilla would both go down with leg injuries. They would work their way back in the game late, but it just wouldn't be the same. It would be 30 all at the half in the fourth. Follett up six. Buena Vista facing fourth down. Evans' pass will be blocked by Juan Rubio. The Longhorns would force the Panthers to punt with just two minutes left. So BV's season came down to a fourth and 12 with a minute left. Bustamantes appears to get the first down, but the referees mark him short. Head coach John Benavides, he just can't believe it. The horns seemingly robbed by the refs. Follett wins 44-38. That left the number one ranked Coyotes facing the two-time defending state champs from Crowell. Borden County on the board first. Hunter Jones swings it out to Trace Ritchie. Dives for the goal line touchdown. Coyotes now down 16-8. Backed up to their own tent. Jones dumps it off to Corbin Sumner who breaks not one, not two but three tackles and he is gone. 70 yards for the game tying score, 16 all. It would be 36-32 in favor of the Wildcats at the midway point. The Coyotes were held to just one touchdown though in the second half. Skyler Hayes had two interceptions as Crowell stuns Borden County 68 to 40, denying a trip back to Shotwell for State for Borden. So all of our teams are officially out. Iran season came to a halt last night at the hands of Albany for the third time in four seasons. The Braves falling to the Lions 42-28 in the 2A2 Division II quarterfinals. Five seniors played their last game for the Tribe. 36, though, out of its 41 players will return in 2016, meaning the four weeks of extra season. It could pay off big time. The 2015 Texas football season more than likely came to an end today in Waco with more questions than answers. The Longhorns had no realistic shot really at making a bowl even with a win today over Baylor. 
The Horns were strictly playing for pride and head coach Charlie Strong because if Texas lost, Strong would have lost 15 losses the past two seasons, the most in consecutive seasons in program history. It was senior day for Baylor. Junior Corey Coleman said after the game he's leaving school early for the NFL draft. Texas hushing McLean Stadium in the first quarter. 57-yard touchdown toss from Tyrone Swoops to Caleb Blewett. Horns go up 7-0. Still in the first, UT leading 10 to zip. Can it get any worse for Baylor at the quarterback position? Third stringer Chris Johnson. He gets lit up by the Texas D. Coughs up the ball. Johnson would leave the game with a concussion. So in comes receiver Lynx Hawthorne. The Ford stringer's first drive. It ends as bad as you could imagine. Hawthorne's deep throw will be intercepted by Duke Thomas, and Texas is going to return it 30 yards to their own 40. Thomas tackled hard by Hawthorne, a late hit by the Horns. That's going to spark the Texas sideline to clear as well as the Baylor sideline for a pretty short skirmish. UT goes into the half up 17-0, the first time BU's been shut out since 2011 against Oklahoma State. Fast forward in the fourth, Bears down 10. Hawthorne keeps and leaps over the pylon. Baylor only trails by three now, but Texas would hold on. The final play, Hail Mary is going to be no good. Longhorns win 23-17, ending its season at 5-7. Not yet mathematically eliminated from a bowl. Baylor, though, denied a Sugar Bowl invite. How about those Cougars, though? Houston taking on Temple in the American Athletic Conference Championship. UH up 10-0 just before intermission. Greg Ward Jr. takes it to the sidelines. He's going to scamper home for the 47-yard TD run, making it 17 nothing at the half. Ward would run for another score in the second half, totaling 148 yards on the ground. Cougs win 24-13, earning an automatic bid to the New Year's six bowl game. Going back to the Basin 323 Ministries kicked off its club volleyball season with a special guest speaker. Former professional volleyball player Adam Johnson spoke to the players, parents, and coaches at Midland Christian's Thomas and Jim. The former U.S. national team member shared his experiences with the game, saying club volleyball is huge in a player's development. Wrapping up with Juco Hoops, Midland hosting Clarendon Ladies first. MC up 52-25 at the half, padding the lead in the third. That's Midland Christian grab Morgan Ashton knocking down the corner three from the inbounds pass. Lady Shaps blow by the Lady Bulldogs by 24, improving to 14-2. and two. Lastly, the men. Shaps led the Dogs 47-37 at the half. Midland assaulting the rim in the second. Deshaun Francis to Ja'Kai Simmons. That's an alley-oop. Another dunk for Simmons shortly after. Jump on, jump on that boy up to something. Woo! Midland cruising to a 99-76 W. Shaps now 13-2. Simmons with the game high, 20 points. That is all the sports I have for you. We're going to be right back after the